The film tells the story of a man named Sang Yu, who experiences a fear of sleeping. Sang Yu was once an experienced screenwriter, but his ability to write stories gradually declined because he constantly suffered from nightmares that made him afraid to sleep. In his dreams, Sang Yu is always chased by a large, terrifying black creature. Sang Yu feels extremely frustrated. His nightmares feel so real that he can no longer distinguish between his dreams and reality. One day, Sang Yu's colleague, San Ge, urges him to complete the script project he's working on, as he has already been paid but has not yet finished the script. Sang Yu faces financial difficulties because the money from San Ge has been spent on treatments for his sleep disorder, but the nightmares continue to haunt him. Sang Yu is even unable to pay his rent, leading to his eviction. One day, while writing in a restaurant, Sang Yu is suddenly approached by the frightening black creature that always attacks him in his dreams. The creature tries to strangle him to death, but then he wakes up and realizes it was just a dream. As Sang Yu sinks deeper into despair and depression, he ultimately decides to attempt suicide by jumping from a tall building. However, his suicide attempt is thwarted by a street food vendor. The food vendor approaches him and offers him food while advising him not to make hasty decisions to end his life. Sang Yu then shares his problems, including the frequent nightmares he experiences. The elderly man advises him to try to wake himself up when he is dreaming. The elderly man explains that Sang Yu must convince himself that he is dreaming, so the terrifying creature won't be able to harm him and he can wake up from his sleep. In the evening, Sang Yu decides to sell his phone to buy food at a convenience store. After that, he sits outside the store eating his meal. However, the terrifying black creature appears again. The creature attacks him with a sword. Sang Yu, believing he is asleep and dreaming, remembers the elderly man's words. He convinces himself that he is only dreaming. Finally, he manages to wake up from his dream and the terrifying figure vanishes, but the sword does not disappear. He then intends to sell the sword at a flea market. The antique dealers there are fascinated by the sword he carries, but since they offer a low price, Sang Yu decides not to sell it to them. Eventually, Sang Yu arrives at a more prestigious antique shop and successfully sells the sword for 20,000 yuan. After getting enough money, he immediately fills his stomach with various delicious dishes he had never tasted before. Not only that, but he also buys some new clothes, a laptop, and rents a luxurious room at a five-star hotel. Sang Yu's appearance changes drastically after he shaves his mustache and beard, making him look more handsome. He considers making money again in the same way. Sang Yu, who used to be terrified when dreaming, is now more prepared because he has a purpose. He then takes sleeping pills to help him fall asleep quickly. In his dream, Sang Yu finds himself in the hotel where he is staying. He walks through the hotel corridor, sorting through some antique furniture that he can sell. However, before he can make his choice, the terrifying black creature reappears and attacks him with a large gold-handled axe. When the axe hits his chest, he immediately tries to wake himself up again. Sang Yu wakes up in bed. Holding the large axe, Sang Yu returns to the antique shop and sells the axe, making even more money. Sang Yu uses all his money to have fun at a nightclub. He returns to his hotel room heavily intoxicated. Before closing his eyes, he glimpses an article in a magazine about a museum displaying valuable antiques. He then dreams of being in the museum. Sang Yu begins selecting which antique items to bring back to the real world. But once again, his actions are thwarted by the black creature that haunts his dreams. After struggling to dodge a barrage of bullets fired by the black creature, he manages to bring two highly valuable antiques back to reality. Now, Sang Yu is better at negotiating and has connections with buyers willing to pay fantastic prices for the antiques. One buyer asks how he acquired the antiques. Sang Yu does not tell the truth and chooses to leave to avoid further questions. One day, Sang Yu accidentally meets San Ge while standing on the side of the road. At that moment, he realizes that he is no longer the unfortunate Sang Yu of the past. Sang Yu then treats San Ge to lunch at a luxurious restaurant. San Ge still cannot believe Sang Yu has suddenly become wealthy. Sang Yu then gives San Ge some cash to prove that he is no longer poor. After that, Sang Yu visits a cafe at the end of the street owned by a woman named Hua Er. Sang Yu has long had feelings for Hua Er, who is an old friend. However, because he was a poor writer in the past, he felt insecure about approaching her. But now everything has changed, and Sang Yu can finally chat with Hua Er without feeling awkward. 
Hua Er even expresses the difficulties she is facing to Sang Yu without hesitation. Hua Er says that the cafe is on the verge of bankruptcy because the number of customers is decreasing daily. In the evening, Sang Yu tells San Ge about the difficulties Hua Er is facing. San Ge laughs because he thinks that now Sang Yu could have any woman he wants, but it seems Sang Yu is only interested in Hua Er. Sang Yu, who is heavily intoxicated, is escorted to his hotel room by Sang Jae. While Sang Yu is sound asleep, Sang Jae secretly searches for clues on how he can make quick money. Sang Jae is shocked when Sang Yu wakes up with a handful of gold jewelry in his hand. Seeing this, Sang Jae thinks that Sang Yu now has a superpower to steal valuable items through the dream world. The next day, Sang Yu immediately buys Hua Er's cafe. Since he doesn't understand the restaurant business, he hands over all the management of the cafe to Hua Er, and the profits will be split equally according to their agreement. Then Sang Yu and Hua Er have dinner at a classy restaurant and enjoy time together. One day, Sang Yu plans to steal again through the dream world, and this time, Sang Ge acts as his assistant, who will watch over him while he dreams. This time, Sang Yu aims to take cash from a bank. The terrifying black creature reappears in the dream world and attacks him. But now Sang Yu is better prepared and able to fight off the black creature and easily wake up from his dream. The next day, Sang Yu goes to Hua Er's cafe, which is now bustling with customers. Unbeknownst to Hua Er, Sang Yu had distributed cash to people with the condition that they must spend it at Hua Er's cafe. It was Sang Yu's idea to reignite Hua Er's enthusiasm for running her business. Not only that, but Sang Yu also secretly slips a bag of money to the elderly food vendor who once helped and fed him. Sang Yu continues stealing through the dream world. This time he steals a luxury sports car, which he magically brings back to the real world. He then uses the car for his daily needs, including driving Hua Er to work at the cafe and taking her on dates. Sang Yu and Hua Er's relationship grows closer day by day. Sang Yu also takes Hua Er's advice to write a screenplay. In short, Sang Yu succeeds in becoming a famous writer, making Hua Er very proud of him. Despite becoming a successful and famous writer, Sang Yu still explores the dream world and steals valuable items. This time, he wakes up in a large cave filled with treasure. He sees a mysterious man, whose name is unknown. Suddenly Sang Yu tries to take the golden belt worn by the mysterious man, but the mysterious man's hand moves and touches his chest. Sang Yu then leaves the cave by waking himself up. After that incident, Sang Yu begins to feel bored. He tells Sang Ge that he will soon retire because the wealth he has accumulated is now more than enough. Sang Ge, however, encourages Sang Yu to accumulate more money to build a tall and magnificent tower that will later be used to shelter the homeless. Sang Yu just smiles broadly at Sang Ge's idea. One day, Sang Yu and Hua Er are on the rooftop of a building to enjoy the festive fireworks display in the night sky. After that, Sang Yu takes Hua Er back to her home and stays for a while. While waiting for Hua Er, who is in the bathroom, suddenly a sword appears out of nowhere and stabs Sang Yu's chest. The sword disappears in an instant, but the wound on Sang Yu's chest is very real. Because of this, he decides to return to his hotel without saying goodbye to Hua Er. Upon arriving at the hotel, Sang Yu tells Sang Ge about what happened, and believes that it is retribution for all the thefts he has committed. Sang Yu even recalls the mysterious man touching his chest in the dream world, and assumes that everything happening to him now is connected to his past dreams. When he is about to go to sleep, Sang Yu asks Sang Ge not to accompany him this time, as he will not be working on any tasks. Sang Ge complies with Sang Yu's wish and leaves him alone. In his dream this time, Sang Yu finds himself on the rooftop of a skyscraper. There, he sees someone standing with their back to him. When Sang Yu approaches, he realizes that the person is himself. Sang Yu then wakes up to find wounds all over his body. The next day, Sang Yu heads to Hua Er's cafe, but suddenly someone attacks him from behind and takes him away in a car. It turns out that the person who kidnapped Sang Yu is a gang member led by a man named Qian. Chen received information about Sang Yu from an employee who works at the antique shop, where Sang Yu regularly sells his stolen items. Sang Yu offers Qian $10 million in exchange for his release, and a promise that they would never bother him again. 
The next day, Qian's men show up at the designated place, as per Sun Yu's instructions. However, instead of freeing him, they also kidnap Sun Ge and hold him captive alongside Sun Yu. Sun Yu then reveals to Qian that he is nearing the end of his life. When he dies, Qian will be able to take possession of all his wealth. Sang Yu then takes Qian to his hotel room to prove his words. It turns out that Sang Yu's hotel room is like a penthouse, expansive and luxurious. Filled with numerous high-value treasures he has accumulated from the dream world. At the same time, Hua Er visits the hotel and insists on seeing Sang Yu. Through the intercom at the reception desk, Sang Yu instructs Hua Er to leave the hotel, but she remains adamant. When she arrives at the room, she finds Sang Yu held captive by Qian's men. Hua Er tries to fight back when Qian's men attempt to harm her. Sang Yu and Sang Ge also try to fend off Qian's men who outnumber them. In the end, they manage to escape from Qian. Sang Ge, exhausted and unable to run any further, sacrifices himself so that Sang Yu and Hua Er can flee to safety. When they reach a safer location, Sang Yu suddenly collapses and falls into another dream. This time he finds himself in a place filled with rocks. He then recalls all the events in his life, from the time he suffered in poverty to the moment he suddenly became wealthy. He realizes that all the suffering at the end of his life is retribution for his greed. Sang Yu tries to wake himself up from the dream, but his efforts continue to fail until he finally transforms into a terrifying monster. He then finds a machete, which he uses to break down the wall separating the dream world from the real world. The wall leads to Sang Yu's hotel room, where Qian and his men are gathering the treasures. As the monster is about to kill the helpless Sang Yu lying on the floor, Sang Yu tries to wake himself up by repeating the phrase, I am dreaming. Instantly, Sang Yu awakens from his dream, and all the items he brought from the dream world disappear without a trace. It seems that time has reset to before he obtained those items from the dream world. Hua Er, knowing that Sang Yu is experiencing financial difficulties, offers him a job to help her manage the cafe. Slowly but surely, Sang Yu's life begins to improve, and now he no longer has nightmares and can continue working on his script project and earn money. Sang Ge is also alive because time has reset. One day, while Sang Yu is typing his script in the cafe, he spots the elderly food vendor. He approaches the man with the intention of greeting him, but then the food vendor returns the bag of money that Sang Yu had secretly given him. Sang Yu is shocked because the money should have disappeared along with everything else. The food vendor then tells Sang Yu that he too had gone through a similar experience. The elderly man shows the scars he received from the strange events. And the film ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video.